In this video, I'm going to be introducing our PageRank project, project one in the course. This project is going to have you implement the PageRank algorithm, an algorithm that decides how much relative influence to assign to each node in a given graph. This algorithm was first popularized by its use in the Google search engine. It was kind of the secret sauce that made search so valuable back in the late 90s and early 2000s and is really what gave the company prominence. All right, so the goal of the PageRank algorithm is to determine how to give relative influence or weight to each node in a given graph. A graph is just a representation of a bunch of connections between some object named nodes. So I've got this graph over here where I've got um, in zero, node zero right here, and then node uh, in one, and then node in two. And we've got some links between them. So node two is, has a directed link from in two to in one. Node zero has a link emanating from in zero and going to in one. And then in one goes back to in zero as well. In two also goes over to uh, in one. All right, so in this case, we also have a weight for each of these nodes. So to each of these nodes, we've assigned this weight of one third. All right, so in general, graphs consist of a pair of what is called the set of nodes, and then also the set of edges. And these edges are of this form where they connect each node. So I have an edge from some in zero to some in one. Now you can represent graphs in a bunch of different ways. In this case, we're just going to enumerate what's called an adjacency list, which is just a list of edges. There are a bunch of other representations that are more or less efficient, depending on the kind of access pattern for the data structure. This is a pretty inefficient representation, but for our purposes, it's going to be fine. We're not really focused on writing a high performance implementation right here. You would need to use something like an inverted indices type representation or something like that in general to make this implementation scalable and fast. But this implementation is going to allow you to easily implement it using just sort of folds and racket. All right, now graphs can be composed of either undirected or directed edges. And these edges are going to, in this case, uh, for the PageRank project, always be what are called directed edges. In general, we can have also what are called undirected graphs where there's no direction between the edges. But in this case, links are, or, or sorry, edges are going to represent links and nodes are going to represent pages. And there's always going to be an edge between pages whenever one links to another. And there are not always backlinks. So links are only sort of forward in the World Wide Web. Now, PageRank uh, is the algorithm that powers Google. PageRank's goal is to assign a probability distribution to a graph. So it's going to enumerate, it's going to map for each of these different nodes here, it's going to assign it a probability value. And by that, it also gives a ranking. In this case, they're all ranked the same, they're all ranked a third. And uh, each of these numbers that it's going to give is going to be a relative weight on the scale of zero to one. It's going to form a probability distribution in the sense that the way to interpret a page rank, which is a mapping from each node to a number between zero and one, the way to interpret that is the idea that if I were to just follow those links, for the links, what uh, sort of what I most likely end up on at any given point in time, if I just kind of randomly clicked around and followed this model that we're about to define in a few more slides. So that's what a page rank is doing. Now there are some important facts about these page ranks. So page ranks always sum to one. So in this case, this is a page rank where I assign uh, the value a third to the node in zero, the value one third to the node in one, and the value a third to the node in two. Now if I change this, I could never change it to be something like one fourth. I could only change this to be something like zero and two thirds. That wouldn't really what be what it would be for this graph uh, if we followed the page rank calculation. But I just want to point out this always has to remain a uh, probability distribution in the sense that the values have to sum to one. All right, so that's one thing you're going to need to maintain and it's one thing we're testing for. Now for this assignment, we're going to represent graphs by a list of the edges. All right, so we can use this to calculate things like neighbors. So which nodes map to which other ones. We can always do things like, um, we can also do things like calculate the number of nodes in the graph, the total number of nodes. And we're also going to use this as the input to our page rank algorithm that I'm about to describe in a few more seconds. All right, so here's the first exercise I want you to work through. I'll put this one up. And uh, just to make sure you're sort of thinking about this stuff correctly, this is an exercise to help you understand if you sort of get the graph data structure we're gonna use. So write a function that calculates the pages to which some given page links. So each of these are, represents a 
connection in the graph. This is saying that there's a link between N0 and N1. There's a link between N1 and N0. There's a link between N2 and N0. And there's a link between N2 and N1. The link starts at the first uh, element of the pair, or really a list. It's a, it's a, three ele it's a two element list, but it's a uh, proper list, not just a con cell. So each of the links is given by this sort of two element list where we have the thing on the left is the place that the edge starts from and the thing on the right is the thing that the, uh, the edge goes to. All right, so we can get the links of the graph like this. So if I want to know what the links of node are in some graph L, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a recursive function loop that maps over uh, just this uh, graph and maps over and watches the set of links that are accumulated and it's going to accumulate them in this list L. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, if we've got an empty graph, so if we've got an empty list or we hit the end right here, so we have no more nodes left or no more edges left to process, then we're just gonna return this accumulated value L. Otherwise, if we have some uh, first link right here and then the rest of the uh, graph to process, we're gonna check to see if P0 is equal to the node we're looking for. If it is, we're going to update the accumulator to add that one on. And then uh, otherwise, we're just going to loop around not changing the accumulator at all. And this will give us the links uh, to which or the nodes to which this uh, node links to. All right. And you have to be careful. Uh, you should think about how you could make this unique. For example, this might return multiple different links. Uh, you'll have to watch out for that and think about how you might accommodate that. There are some functions like, for example, uh, list to set and set to list that might help you in that case. So page ranks are going to be represented using racket hashes. A page rank is a mapping from each page in the graph to a number between zero and one. And it also satisfied this condition that all the values sum to one, all right? So remember, a page rank is not a single node. A page rank is a distribution. Because of that, we're going to represent it with a racket hash table. So again, a page rank is a distribution. When you're talking about pages, you're not talk sorry, when you're talking about page ranks, you're not talking about just a single page. You're talking about a ranking among all of the pages in some graph. So when I say, for example, step a page rank, I'm not saying step an individual page. It's something that you have to do for all pages. And so it's a key value map. All right, um, hash, racket hashes are implemented under the hood using this really fast hash array mapped try. Has some nice properties we're not gonna talk about here. I'll probably mention them in class once or twice. So here are just some uh, racket hash functions that you can use. I've already kind of shown these in the physical class, but uh, we'll sort of chronicle them here. So you can build a hash using the function hash and it accepts a set of pairs. So every other element is the, uh, is the key and then every other element after that is the value. So this is a hash that maps the symbol A to the number zero, the number one to the number two, and the string hello to the symbol C. All right. And note that the keys can be heterogeneous types, although in this exercise, I believe they'll all be the same. Hash ref looks up something in a given hash. So if I looked up A in this hash using hash ref, then I would get back the value zero. Hash set returns a new hash for me. Now this is crucial. It doesn't do anything to the input hash. If I have some hash that I put right here, some variable X, X will not change at all. Hash set will return a new hash that updates A within X to be equal to two. But it doesn't change the underlying X at all. It's all immutable, all right? So be careful for that. Don't expect your input to hash set to change. Just use the output of hash set, all right? And then hash keys and hash values both return lists of the keys and values, useful for iterating. Now they do not return them in the same order, so you can't do things like pair them up and iterate over that. Be careful about that. Always iterate over the hash keys. That's kind of what I mostly do. Now the page rank algorithm works like this. First, it begins by coming up with this thing called an initial page rank. And the way that it comes up with an initial page rank, it, it takes in a graph and it sets every node in that graph to be equal to one third. So this is an initial page rank right here for this graph where I've got N0, N1, and N2 are all the nodes of the graph. And then each of the page ranks values is one third because there are three nodes in the graph. So if there were four nodes in this graph, if I added something like an N3 right here, 
this these would all change to be one quarter, so one fourth. All right, but at least for the graph over here on the right, they're all one third. All right, and then it performs an iteration step some number of times. And so what you do is you're going to run this page rank algorithm that I'm about to describe in a, a slide or two more. You're going to run this algorithm until you just can't run it anymore. Uh, it's going to converge to some, some value. And so it's an equation that's going to get you a pr more and more precise result. You're going to get closer and closer to a true answer, and it will eventually converge. All right, we'll see some examples of that. So the page rank step is sort of like, uh, the, the intuition is sort of basically this. Page rank is kind of like a vote. Each page has a certain share of influence, which is its page rank. Now each step, the page gives some of its influence to every page to which it points. So if, if you have a really credible page like CNN.com, if it links to another page like, um, you know, the whitehouse.com or something like that, whitehouse.gov, I guess then it will, um, it will give a lot of influence to that page. And so that's what PageRank is modeling. And uh, intuitively, PageRank is the sum of a random chance at any point that a surfer will just kind of step to some random point. So this kind of models the fact that when people are surfing links over the World Wide Web, at some random interval in time, they're always just going to close their web browser and open up an entirely new page, right? So there is just some random chance that a surfer will jump to a random page at any point in time. And then after that, what you do is you follow the links uh, dictated by this formula. So I'll explain this formula in a second, but basically, at every step in the way, page rank for any individual page, PI, is calculated by this formula right here. What you do is you take 1 minus D divided by N, where D is something named a dampening factor. That's going to be something we're going to give to you. In the original formulation, it was a constant. In Google's papers, they mention precisely how they pick this dampening factor. They kind of play around with it. I've heard internally and colloquially that it kind of doesn't quite matter what you pick, but I believe 0.5 was the original number that was used. And so you do 1 minus D divided by N, which is the total number of pages in the, uh, in the graph. All right, so the total number of pages, plus this dampening factor D times the sum oops, the sum of all pj, which are the pages that link to i. So what you do is you first calculate all of the, uh, all of the pages that link to this current page, pi, you find that set, which is called m of pi. So m of pi is the set of pages that link to i, the set of incoming links. And for every page pj, in that set of incoming links to the current page PI, what you're gonna do is you're gonna sum up that value of this formula right here, PR PJ over L of PJ. All right, so you're going to use the current page rank of PJ divided by the number of links from PJ to any other page that PJ links to, all right? So let's look at an example of how we would use this formula. All right, so let's look at an example of how we would calculate this for this graph right here, where we're starting with this page rank, where we've got a third, a third, a third. So for n0, how are we gonna calculate the next page rank here? So what we're gonna do is it's gonna be one minus 0.85, or sorry, one minus 85 divided by 100. All right, and that's because uh, we need to calculate this top term right here. So if you do the math, that ends up being one minus 85 hundredths, all over uh, three, because there are three nodes in the graph. So n is equal to three in this case. n is just the total number of nodes in the graph, right? Which is the number of unique nodes on all the edges, right? Plus d times each of these page ranks that comes into this current page. So which page is linked to node n0? Well, node n1 links to n0, so does node n2. And this is going to be one third divided by two for n2, all right, because n2 links to two separate pages, so we're gonna divide by two, and then its page rank is one third. So we're gonna take one third divided by two, and we're gonna multiply that whole thing times d. And in, in our case, d is just 85 hundredths. And that, again, is a magic factor that we just give to you. And then for n1 over here, we're going to take its influence as well. That's going to be 85 divided by 100 times one third over one. 
And it's gonna be over one rather than over two here because N1 only has one link out. So L for N1 is just going to be one rather than two because N2 links to two other pages where N1 only links to one page. And so if we sum up these three numbers, this is the factor right here. And then we've got two pages in this sum. So two pages are in M of PI. Remember M of PI is the set of pages that have links that in come to this page. So we've got N2 and N1 both link into node N0. And if we uh, look at the relative share there, we can see that um, we get these two factors here. So we add all these things up, we get 19 over 40 for N0, also for N1. And then for N2, we get uh, one over 20. All right, if we do all the math here. So you can make several simplifying assumptions here. You can first assume that there are no self links. There are no graphs, uh, sorry, in the graph, there's no links from any node to itself, all right? You can also assume that every node has at least one outgoing link. All right, there are no kind of isolated nodes, and you need all of uh, you need these two assumptions to kind of make the math work out. Otherwise, the probability distributions they kind of break down a little bit. So all of our test input graphs have this form. So I'm going to sort of end this by sort of giving you some hints. So I would say make sure you read through the Racket documentation for lists, sets, and also hashes. Make sure you start pretty soon. This project will be harder than the first project in the class, which is kind of a warm up. This project's a little bit tougher, still not quite as tough as the projects later on, but it's not too bad. I do think in particular, this project has an easy assignment for the excellent part. And so if you can really come up with the solution to this uh, step page rank, uh, part, which is kind of the hardest uh, function to write in this assignment. That's required for satisfactory. This is all specified in the readme. Go check there to see which things are specified for which parts. But if you can figure out step page rank, then I really do think you'll be able to fit a iterate page rank and tell and uh, rank pages. And you'll be able to get the excellent mark. So I would really encourage you to go uh, and try to work through all the different pieces required for this, uh, for this project. All right, so good luck and let me know in Slack as you have questions about the project and I'll talk to you there. All right, thanks. Thank you.